Hello, my friends. Good morning. Uh, it is a fantastic, gorgeous day here in North Carolina. We are between two waves of massive heat, so I am taking advantage. Brenna and I are out here this morning. We have two main chores that I want to get done that I thought um, that you would find really helpful because you've asked about them. We're going to be pruning two shrubs that bloom on old growth. I'm going to show you exactly how to prune tea olives, sweet osmanthus, or sweet olive, depends on where you live, so depends on what it's called, and the wygelia. So here we are um, in the very the, the bed that's in front of the house. This is like the daylily bed, if you're familiar with that. And these wygelia are, or wygelia, however you say it, are right here on the corner. Um, to give you an idea of where this bed is, hopefully the sun will cooperate as I turn, you will see behind me the um, Incredibles, that's the patio. So this is on that kind of that corner. The creek is just right here in front of me, corner of the house um, that these are. I, I did these a couple of years ago as a test because we are on the border of them being too we are too warm for them um, and our winters may not be cold enough, but guess what? They are doing great, especially this one on the end. Um, Sonic Reds, that's what these are from Proven Winners. And um, so I'm gonna show you how to prune them because clearly you can see they need to be tamed a little bit. They do bloom on old growth, so there is a certain time that you want to prune them. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. While we're here, I did want to show you this bed. So in here, um, I've did, been doing a little weeding this morning. Um, we have three crepe myrtles. They are massive. These are the Natchez crepe myrtles. Been here probably uh, 10, 11, 12 years old and they will get huge, beautiful white blooms. When we first had them, we planted some of the summerific hibiscus. So you can see that I've got, I've got like one here, there goes Brenna. Um, I've got a little sad one right here. And so they're just dotted throughout. This bed, um, as the crepe myrtles are growing and getting big, they're gorgeous, right? We love that because it gives us shade. They're creating more shade here, which is, I mean, obviously you know that's gonna happen, but the summerifics need a lot more sun, especially this year is getting worse um, than one that's just so pitiful up there by the well. Yes, it's getting morning sun right now, but then it's just a couple hours and then it's in complete shade. So I'm thinking that this bed is gonna transition into more of a shade bed, which is yay, right? That's fantastic. Last summer, um, we planted some of the golden penny max, which are a fantastic hydrangea. They have been completely 100% neglected. I have not, they're not on irrigation. I didn't fertilize, I didn't compost. Yeah, it was a tough love moment with these guys. Um, so they need some attention, but like I was thinking about putting Edgeworthia in here. I could put like autumn ferns. I could put things that can handle some morning sun, but then get a lot of like afternoon shade and tend to be okay on the dry side. Cause I don't know that we will put this on irrigation. Um, that's just not the plan right now. That gives you kind of an overview of this bed and what is going on. Of course, the daylilies are absolutely stunning. This is just the classic yellow daylily. Um, Nothing fancy about it. So when we moved in, my mama had a ton of them. We planted them for erosion control and they are gorgeous. I'll try to show you a bigger picture here in a little bit. But right now, what we are going to do is we are going to focus here on these Wygilia, Wygilla, again, tomato, tomato. And then we are going to move up to, we're going to follow the shade again this morning, up there to the tea olives and we are going to give them a nice little prune. So let me get everything set up and um, I'm going to show you exactly how to print them. Easy peasy people. Easy, easy. All right. So I have uh, two weapons of choice for me today with um, pruning these Wygelia. First of all, I will show you the new garden belt came in. Jerry ordered this for me a couple of weeks ago. He found a fantastic leather company here actually in North Carolina. They're in Western North Carolina and they make these absolutely beautiful garden belts, tool belts, great leather. Um, so he ordered it for me 
and it is spectacular. It came this weekend, so this is my first day in the garden with it, but I love it. You can get different um, designs as far as like the, you know, the pouches and everything, but it will hold my hori hori. I can put my phone in here. I can put two clippers in there, and then I can put Brenna's clicker. It has a little like a keychain that you can put that on there and it's completely customizable like you have to send in your waist measurements and then they give it to you know they give you that size and um oh my gosh it's lovely i'll link the company not affiliated with them whatsoever i just love them um love it so far super soft it is not stiff at all so if you're interested in it you can go check that out now my weapons of choice i have my um my limb and branch lopper so this is for my bigger uh stems that I need to, to have a little bit of ease, I will use this. And then of course, like I said, I have my Felcos. So these Felcos are a number two. Um, remember, if you want to order from Felco, you can use our coupon code GWC10 and you get 10% off your order. I will have that coupon code up there for you. Um, but yeah, so anywhere you go to Felco and order any of their products off of Felco.com, you get 10% off. So make sure you check that out. So I have those, so for my smaller branches. Now, when you're pruning, um, first of all, let's talk about old growth. These are gonna bloom predominantly off of old growth. So yes, it is does have a couple of blooms on it right now. I'm not concerned about that. I'm more concerned about my big spring flush. So this clearly needs to be tamed and brought back. I have never pruned it because I just, I didn't need to. I probably could have done it last year, I didn't. Um, so that's why we're gonna get after it this year. I'm gonna give it a gentle shape. I am not gonna completely take it back by a ton. You can safely prune shrubs back by one third. Like that's the safe mark. If you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, you could go to a half. You just need to watch the water and make sure that the plant's not under too much stress. I'm gonna go and really just give a gentle shape. So like these crazy limbs that are really tall, take them back and give it a nice shape. You prune it. And then it can flush back out with new growth and it has time to create the flower buds for next year. Now, you can do this two ways. You can be super particular where you cut it and you can trim it right above two leaves or you can just go in there and shape it up. I'm going to do a little bit of both. I don't want it to look like that severely like, oh, hey, hello, everybody. I just got pruned. I want people not to notice that it um, has been recently pruned. So I'm going to go in there between these two um, my clippers and my loppers. I'm going to go in there, shape it up. Um, yeah, and it's just kind of eye on the beholder. Just look at it, make sure it has a good shape to it, and then move on to the next one. Not hard at all. Okay, so when I say to go in where there are two branches, so you can see right here we've got two branches. Well, Brenna just came through. We've got two branches coming up. So I'm going to take my clippers right here, right, and I'm going to snip. So now here is my cut right there. So these are all gonna turn into nice, thick, strong branches. And that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go around and clean these babies up and get them shaped up and move on to the next one. Okay, my friends, all of the shrubs have been pruned and man, oh, 
I didn't realize how kind of unruly they were until I got them shaped up. Um, love them so much more. Neat and tidy. Nice little pretty mounds. Um, not complete balls, of course, but yes, they have been pruned. They look very nice. We've got tons of time, tons of growing season for them to come in and put out new growth and flush out and be very happy. Now, Something that I ran into that I do want to share with you. Um, one of the downsides of planting underneath crepe myrtles, such as these beauties, is that they can send out runners and suckers. It only seems to happen with these is when we dig a hole. Um, they just don't, for this variety where we are, they just don't send out a sucker or a runner um, just for the fun of it. It's only when you break the ground that you notice that. Um, so when I was in here, pruning i noticed um, that okay so this gives you an idea so this is the sonic red that looks different that is a crepe myrtle um, sucker that has come up so what i'm going to do is let me show you um, and then there it happened on this one and then you can see that long branch sticking out right here on the one next to it so when that happens, you find your crepe myrtle, right? So this is the crepe myrtle, and you follow the stem all the way down to the ground, which is this little guy right here. So you see this right here? This is the crepe myrtle. If I were to try to dig this out, I would destroy um, my sonic red. And if I cut it, it's just gonna sprout back. So what I have learned to do is to take my clippers and cut it down to the ground as low as I can and then take your herbicide of choice, do not dilute it, put it in a little cup with a paintbrush and you paint that fresh cut. That way it only kills the crepe myrtle and not your good plant. Um, so that's what I do. Again, just a little tiny paintbrush and a little dab will do you. Um, just don't dilute it and then it's nice and strong and it will take care of that plant um, so when you have things that pop up in the middle of a good plant and if you know that you're going to try to dig it out it will be impossible and you're going to do more harm than good that's when i just clip it and use that herbicide on that fresh cut now what we're going to do is we are going to come over here right behind me and get the uh, tea olives pruned back as well we're still in the shade uh, yeah so get that done and then our chores for today will be done this little bed is right off our front porch. It is doing fantastic. Just to kind of give you an overview of like what's in here, right? So we have the Senorita Rosalita Cleome. Right now it is, the honeybees are just all over it. Um, I planted all of these shrub, uh, shrubs, annuals were planted as one gallons, except the newly newer coleus. So it kind of gives you an idea. So the Senorita Rosalita Cleome, beautiful, soft pink, huge uh, pollinator tractor is doing great i've got the rocking fuchsia salvia in here my hummingbirds i can sit on the front porch and hear them and they are just going to town on the salvia they love it it is absolutely stunning the showpiece of this bed has turned into be this um this is a horseman but it's a dwarf so it's not going to get massive it's not going to get huge a lot of people when we first planted it were like oh my gosh why are you planting that right there it is not going to get that big um as because they can get like really large it is doing great this bed is not on irrigation that kind of gives you an idea once this guy got established it is super happy and on this side of the house we have our greatest foundation um, on the driveway side, we only have maybe a foot of foundation showing. On this side, it's more like three and a half to four. So this nice tree, gorgeous blue-green cedar is just doing great here, nice and happy. So it's in here, but in the back are there are four tea olives, sweet osmanthus, a fantastic evergreen. Um, it's technically a shrub, it's not a tree, that will almost grow into a tree. If you've been around me for any length of time, you know how much I love this plant. Does beautiful, teeny tiny little white flowers in the fall, winter, and early spring that smell amazing. They bloom on old growth. I need to shape them up. I do not want them to get crazy tall. I want them to go more wide and kind of form a hedge than, because if I never prune them, then they would kind of get taller than the house. I <laughs> don't want that. So we're gonna get in there and do that. Um, I just wanted to stop for a minute and show you 
these great plants first time i've done this first time i've not put petunias in here and everybody is very happy um, i do see though right here typically i have uh i have bubble gum the super tuning your vista bubble gum in here uh had it last year look at this i must not have gotten all the roots back out last year because there's a the bubble gum there we go all right so we're getting everything kind of situated and uh yeah we're gonna prune these because I've got an appointment I've got to get to. So Jenny's got to focus and stay on it. All right. So if you can see, I'm on the very end. I don't know. Our air conditioning units are just right. Like our HVAC system is just right here. So these do a great job of hiding them. Again, um, so I'm 5'2", five 5'3", five ish and they're still a foot or two uh, taller than me. I want to bring them down. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically just like the wide Jillia, I could totally use hedge trimmers on this, but I don't want to have that like really harsh look to it. So I am going to go ahead and just use my Felcos. I didn't even need the loppers down there. So I'm going to use my Felcos on this. And again, we're going to get it done really quick because uh, Jerry and I have an appointment in town and I've got to get after it. All right, so the first one is done. You can see how much I brought it down and you can see how much taller the other ones are. Again, you could totally take hedge trimmers to these and really like cut them back pretty good. Um, they will bounce back, they will be fine. But again, I want it to look, um, I want it to look not majorly pruned because of course when you use hedge trimmers it cuts all your leaves also and if i can avoid that then i want to do that in this instance okay um, so you do what works best in your garden remember be a student of your own garden um, and so we're going to just kind of give it a gentle shape make it sure it's nice and even keep on going down and get the rest of them done my friends so all of the tea olives have been trimmed back i barely made getting them all done before i had to leave for my appointment uh i got three out of the four done so i after i got back from my appointment i put my work clothes back on got out here brent and i um, went ahead and got that fourth one trimmed sun is out sun hat is out because it is a good little toasty in here um, but let me just show you this overall bed now that it is done um, you can see all of my debris there in the Kubota so everybody is nice and trimmed looks nice and neat and tidy across there they will flush out pretty quickly tea olives grow very fast um, it would be nothing for me to get like what I trimmed off now today was last year's growth but not all of last year's growth um, they could easily grow another two to three feet with fresh growth um, by the next year when i prune them again so they're just nice and happy leave them alone they are doing just fine the cleome is just looking spectacular the honeybees are still just absolutely all over it did not realize what a pollinator attractor the Cleome was, but it is looking just fantastic. Um, but the whole front yard is really coming across, coming along quite nicely, rather. Uh, the hanging baskets are doing well. If you will remember, I planted these way back in the spring, doing really nice. Um, I do have them on hooks that rotate. So we had a windstorm that came through and it flew. <laughs> 
it flipped them around. So uh, especially these two right here, they're kind of showing their backside, which actually works out pretty well because they'll get some sun and then flush out and do just fine. And then the two over here are showing their pretty sides and doing quite nicely. Somebody had said on one of the comments about, um, I should put them on chains so they hang down lower. The only problem with that is um, we won't be able to see when we sit on our front porch. So again, this is one of those things of, it's my garden, I like it, leave it alone. That's what we have, right? Um, also, the daylilies. People were asking to see the daylilies in full bloom. So there you go, just a beautiful hedge of them as they go all the way down. You can see, of course, how nice and big those crepe myrtles are doing great and then our beautiful tree uh, we got this at the exact same time we got the forest pansy when i was pregnant with jackson so it clearly loves its spot because it is downhill so any kind of rain water it is going to catch it all and does great and um Brenna loves it because of the shade. And then to give you an idea, the Wygilla are right there. So everything is nice and neat and tidy here in the front yard. So I can check that off my to-do list. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna go piddle around in the garden a little bit more today, a little odds and ends here and there. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. Brenna and I will see you in the next video. Bye friends.